Hello YouTube and welcome to the Joe Rockstar channel. First off, I'd like to thank everybody who watched the race video, my first race. I'm really excited about all the positive comments that people left and all the encouragement. Something really surprising and really good came out of it and we'll talk about that at the end of the video. But what I wanted to address was uh, the first incident where I went flying over the handlebars and paused it for effect for the uh, opening credit. A lot of people thought that would hurt really bad, but to tell you the truth, it didn't hurt. I really didn't feel it at all. And part of that was adrenaline, but the bigger part of that is the gear that I'm wearing. I think it's really important that uh, people take their gear seriously. And uh, I'd like to talk about what's been stopping me from getting serious injury. Other than the, the video where I was making the Psycho Pro Band Handguard video uh, review, that is the only time I've actually suffered an injury that really hurt. And that was when I, I hurt my ribs. What happened was I high sided and when I came down I actually pushed my own elbow into my rib cage, landed like that, and uh, bruised my ribs pretty bad which hurt for a few months. Let's start out with the base layer. First off I've got these compression shorts from Shock Doctor. All right, uh, These cost about, I want to say somewhere around the neighborhood of $50. I can't remember exactly how much. They were, they were a little expensive. But not really when you compare them to some of the uh, motocross shorts that are out there. Um, KTM makes one and I've seen some other brands and they can get pretty expensive. And these were kind of a middle of the road deal. As a compliment to that, I also have the Shock Doctor compression shirt. All right, and this is uh, what I wear under my armor. Uh, this has padding in the shoulders. Both shoulders have a pad. And then uh, what's really important here is, and what I was looking for when I bought it was some rib prote protection. And it's also got a pad for the small of your back. Um, and this again, this was also around the $50 uh, range. Both of these I bought on Amazon and you could look them up there. This is the AXO air cage. All right, I bought this off of Amazon uh, for around $140. Now, uh, this thing's awesome. I really like the idea of how, uh, how open it is as far as airflow and everything. It's very hot here in Arizona, so I wanted something that kept me cool but gave me a lot of protection considering that I was just beginning to ride. Uh, as you see, the forearms here give you plenty of uh, protection on the forearm and the elbow. And you can see this one scratched up pretty good. I've gone down on the road. I've gone down in the dirt. and. This thing has kept me from getting a single scratch on my elbow or my forearm. Uh, it also has a shoulder pad, uh, roost protection for your chest. It has a belt that goes across your waist, gives you a little bit of lumbar support. Um, and then on the back we have fine guard, right, which does a really good job of protecting my back. I take a lot of tumbles. It's very flexible. So I've got the extra, extra, extra large which did fit me pretty decently at the time, but now as I've started losing weight, there's a lot of extra room here in the uh, top. You can see I can fold it over. So I might be ready to buy a new one, which I'll probably go with one of those cheaper alternatives. The Axo Air Cage. Right, you can, like I said, you can find it on Amazon. I'm sure you can find it other places. And there are a lot of different alternatives out there that are made just the same way. The next thing I put on are my knee guards. And these knee guards have served me well. Uh, they do a really good job. They've got some scratches in them too. What a lot of you might notice, those of you who are a little bit more experienced, is that there is no serious uh, knee support here. It's just strictly protection. It's not a knee brace. It's not going to protect you from any awkward movements, twisting of your leg, if you get it caught up in something. These are going to be retired. I love them, but they're going to have to be retired because as I'm starting to ride faster and obviously putting myself in more and more risky positions, I'm going to need something that protects my knees a little bit better. This is a new knee brace, brace that's being worn by both uh, Dungey and Villapoto. They're brand new Mobius X8 knee braces. They are not cheap, um, however I feel at this point the investment is worth it. What I haven't talked about on my channel is uh, some of the things that I'm doing besides riding. I'm also working full time. I also uh, go to school full time uh, working on getting a degree and uh, I'm writing and I get pretty busy. 
Um, and the last thing I want to do is suffer an injury that either takes me off the bike or makes it difficult to do all those things that I'm doing. And uh, for a full review on this, there's plenty of them that you guys can find online. I just wanted to show you what they look like. They're not as bulky or big as they seem to look. When I first saw them, I was kind of turned off by how bulky they looked. Some positive things I want to say about it is it looks like it is quality made. I mean, it is it is very quality made. It feels very, very rigid, very tough. So that's it for the knee protection. Next, let's talk about the boots. When I, when I started this, I didn't know how far I was going to go with it, so I went cheap. And cheap is actually not too bad. These boots are the um, O'Neill Rider. I believe they're Rider Elements or whatever. They're the $100 deal, uh, really cheap boots. I bought them here locally at uh, Kochi's uh, Motorsports. Uh, what I do like about them is uh, now that I'm so used to them, they feel really comfortable. I know they're not the best uh, boots on the market and I was looking at maybe getting a new pair of boots, but I think I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna ride these through the summer until the new race season begins in September and then I'll, I'll readdress the issue whether or not I'm going to buy new boots. Now, for most rides, my outerwear consists of one of these types of t-shirts over the armor. Usually something with some kind of funny saying. Uh, at least I thought it was funny. Uh, it was kind of my thing. A uh, little branding thing that I wanted to do for YouTube. And for pants, a pair of your everyday cargo pants. Now, <laughs> I wore the cargo pants even though I have these motocross pants and the reason that I've been wearing the cargo pants is because the cargo pants have pockets right when I'm on a lot of these rides I like to keep my cell phone in my pocket where I can reach it I, I needed some alternative to that and what I decided to go with recently I bought these on Rocky Mountain ATV these are the uh, KTM rally pants Best of all, it has pockets. One on each side. The material is really thick and durable. Um, they're a little bit heavy. Uh, they also have pockets here on the back of the leg. Uh, some small pockets. Um, you could put something tiny in there. I don't know what, but you can put something in there. Okay, so that does it for the pants. For the jersey, for the shirts, I replaced those with this jersey that I got. It wasn't very expensive. It's got a lot of uh, breathable material, you know, a lot of holes in it so I can uh, get some air while I'm riding. It was really nice during the race. And of course, now the bike and I are color coordinated. My brother says there's too much color coordination and that I need to embrace something different, but I kind of like it. So let's talk about helmets. This was my first helmet. When I bought the Honda, this came with it. Um, it was pretty cool design. I liked it. I hated the fact that it's silver because I wanted a gold one. Big 49er fan and my brother's a Raider fan so this he probably loves this thing. The problem with it is uh, it's large and as I've lost weight uh, my cheeks have gotten smaller and my face has gotten a little smaller and so the helmet actually bobbles now on my head. It falls down in front of my eyes. This is like the most copied helmet design I've ever seen. There are this is cyber and there are probably no less than 10 different manufacturers that make the exact same helmet. You could put them side by side and every bolt, every switch, everything's almost exactly the same. Maybe a few things, a few minor things here and there that are different. I liked it so much as far as the design goes that I bought this AFX version that's almost identical to the Cyber one. One of the features that sold me on this one specifically though, because there were like three or four different brands, was this amazing setup down here for the chin strap. It just ratchets in and it's locked. Pull the red tab and it comes right off. If you're wearing gloves, this is awesome. Uh, the problem with this helmet and the other one uh, was for the race, we are required to wear goggles. Well, the problem is, Goggles don't fit really good inside this helmet. I had to buy a new helmet. So I looked for a motocross specific helmet because I know that goggles will fit in there. 
This is the EVS helmet that some of you AMA members might have gotten an email about uh, that they're selling 50% off. And I have to say, it is awesome. It is so comfortable to wear. It's so much lighter than my other helmets. Goggles fit right in it. It's full of nice thick padding. It's really dirty right now. It's full of nice thick padding. It's, it's a DOT approved. I love it. I don't know what else to say about it. Plenty of airflow. Uh, very comfortable. I don't have a lot of motocross helmets to compare it to. This is my only one, but um, it's much better than the other helmets. So now for my big announcement. After the race, um, I was pretty tired and uh, I was sitting down and uh, one of the Prescott Trail Rider members was talking to my brother and we got into a little bit of a conversation and we talked a little bit about my YouTube channel, which he went to watch. And I think the video, uh, the channel video uh, that talks about why I'm doing this and having cancer and surviving it and trying to basically do these things, you know, these things that I wanted to do my whole life and never did. Um, it, it resonated with him. He made a phone call to Dave with Best Dual Sport Bikes and told him, hey man, watch the videos, I guess. And uh, I'm not sure the ins and outs of what went on between the two of them, but uh, Ben got back with me. Um, and he let me know that uh, Dave with Best Dual Sport Bikes wants to sponsor me. Probably the worst writer to ever get a sponsor, um, but it's really wonderful, it's great. I can't express how grateful I am. I don't even know how to begin to express how grateful I am um, because this is a really awesome opportunity. Uh, so Dave with Best uh, Dual Sport Bikes is actually sending me um, just about everything from his site that upgrades the uh, KTM EXC 500. Uh, we're going to do the exhaust, um, the exhaust tip, the TPS tuner, uh, we're going to be putting the clutch weight on, uh, we're going to be doing the dead end bar inserts uh, to stop the vibration, um, the big bottom kit, uh, I mean just the, just amazing, an amazing amount of stuff that's really going to make my machine uh, probably more machine than I can handle, but we'll see. Um, I think the only requirement is that I got to start uh, riding a little bit better, maybe a little less crashing, maybe win a race. We'll see. But I'll do my best to uh, represent Best Dual Sport Bikes in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the most positive light, and I really appreciate everything you guys are doing for me. Uh, ben, I can't thank you enough. I really can't. I really appreciate it. Um, the last thing I want to talk about, uh, this purple band I'm wearing is for a friend of mine that I work with. Uh, his name is Sven. And Sven got Hodgkin's lymphoma just like I did. Uh, he waited a little longer uh, to get it checked out. And uh, he's currently in treatment, uh, getting chemotherapy uh, for, for uh, Hodgkin's. Also, my brother, uh, he actually developed a tumor in his... Um, upper or underarm area and uh, it turned out to be a low-grade b-cell cancer so it seems like this thing is you know going around and I know it's everybody's experience is different but uh, it seems like a lot of people are starting to come down with this kind of thing obviously two people close to me myself and uh, I just want to say as a public service announcement to you guys if if you feel something strange like a lump in your neck or you're feeling some kind of strange lump, do not wait to get it checked out. Don't expect it to just go away on its own. Uh, the key here is early detection. With early detection, the Hodgkin stuff, it's pretty easy to take care of. From what I understand, a uh, few treatments of chemo, I know that doesn't sound that great, but just a few treatments of chemo and some radiation can usually get rid of it. Nobody wants to have it, nobody wants to know they have it, but it's better to know, get it taken care of. Uh, than to wait too long and find out that it's too late. So anyways, uh, I want again, I want to thank everybody for your positive comments, your encouragement. Ben, again, thank you so much for getting me in touch with Dave. Dave, thank you so much for what you're doing for me. It's awesome. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, everybody.